Shalom. <clears throat> Before I begin this video, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechakodash. Also, as well, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that continually roll very well to this very day, that is still to this very day continually feeding the flock through the Spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Shai. And also, as well, uh, likewise, Shalom to the hopefully late as well. That's also following in the footsteps of the apostles and elders of old. And I'm um, also continuing to spread this gospel to other members of the hopefully elect in faith, in truth, in sincerity, and also in all charity. <clears throat> now, uh, I believe I'm going to entitle this video as Why Are Holidays Falling on the Sabbath? You know, I may change the title of the video, you know, it's all according to the spirit. But like always, uh, with these videos and lessons and shows, Lord's will is edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. Lord's will is feed you to the full and uh, feed your spirit and your faith. Uh, boost your faith in your heart by Shemel Shai. And uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. So if you notice, <clears throat> over the past few years, like these, uh, these hella days, as we like to call them, and what these people call holidays, what you've been noticing is that these days have been falling on the Sabbaths. And and, I'm, and you know that the brotherhood, you know, the brothers starting with the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone on down, have been taking note of this, is that these days has been specifically falling on the Sabbaths. Now, now why in today's time, in these last days, are these uh, particular uh, special days that these people hold in high esteem, why have they been falling on the Sabbath? Well, the short answer is that Yahweh Bashmel Shai, who these people inwardly call God and Jesus, in which their true names are indeed Yahweh, which is the Heavenly Father, in the ancient Hebrew, and also is the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, whose name is also in the ancient Hebrew. Those are the true names of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Uh, Yahweh Bashmel Shai has has specifically done it, done this in this fashion to mark those who are the rebels, the ones that rebel against Yahweh Bashmel Shai. And that's basically the short answer of it: is that the Lord is marking the people that want, do not want to have anything to do with the words. Or the ordinances of Yahweh Bashmel Shai, because that Lord, the, the, you know, the Lord is still causing a divide amongst our people, and He is dividing the ones who are worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. He's dividing them away from uh, the rest of the nation of Israel, but not only them, but the rest of the world. You know, we are being made separate from the world. And, you know, when things like this take place, the Lord is, is continuing to further that division. <clears throat> and he is showing us right in front of our faces. You know, the ones that hate Yahweh Bashmel Shai, because this is what it all boils down to. You know, they were. You know, and you can't really sugarcoat it in any sort of way. You can't, you know, reword it or what have you. It is what it is. It's hatred towards the Yahweh Shemel Shai for participating and uplifting these certain specific days, which have nothing to do with Yahweh Shemel Shai. It has nothing to do with the Bible. None of these days have nothing to do with the scriptures, man. And here it is you got certain of a certain jakes that's in you know in these churches they'll tell you otherwise you know they'll tell you that you know there's, there's no harm in doing these things when really it is case in point tomorrow tomorrow is uh thanks stealing you know like we like to call it because that's what it that's what it is that's what that day actually is it's not thanksgiving man it's commemorating the slaughter of your brothers the, the slaughter of, of the northern northern tribes and the northern kingdom of the nation of Israel, and and our people are, love it. So they they would much rather celebrate the death of, of their brothers than to 
to take hold on the ways of Yahweh Bashmi Osha to take hold unto everlasting life, in which this is everlasting life. They rather take hold of death, and, and that's why you know it's been recent videos being put up concerning the people that are dwelling in this kingdom of death. That's why you had this other recent occurrence as well with um with the you know the the A word. I don't know I'm sure you can use that on YouTube. But uh you know my man uh Donovan Sharp, you know, he uh switched the word backwards and he called it uh I believe it's Noit Noit Roba. You know, the you know abort, you know, the abort word. But yeah, they they promote that and uplift that than life. And again, like I said at the beginning of the video, this just shows you that the Lord Yahweh Bashanon Shah is continually marking those who disregard disregard Yahweh Bashanon Shai. And again, does not want to have anything to do with him and have forgotten about him. Has forgotten forgotten his ordinances and his ways. Because really they, they don't even know him. They don't know Yahweh Bashmel Shah like they say they do. And like the uh, scriptures say that uh, with their mouth they show forth much praise, but their heart is far from him. You know, which is their mind. You know, their mind is not is not geared towards what Yahweh Bashmel Shah wants. It's what they want, man. And it's really a selfishness. Okay? You can't put it any other way. It's selfish. It's selfish to to, uh, to 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 do these things that they're doing. You know, we're in a generation of me, 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 my, my, my. You know, I. You know, I got to get mine. You know, it's all about me. You know, I got I got to fulfill my happiness. Okay, what about the happiness of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai? What about his joy? What about his rejoicing? What about his praise? What about his thanks? Our people don't care. And you know what? That's why Yahweh Bashim al no longer cares for the affairs of the two-thirds of our people, man. And that's why he has specifically put these certain days on Sabbaths to show us how much they really hate Yahweh Bashim al -Shai. So as they turn their backs toward the Lord, Yahweh Bashim al the Lord is turning his back towards them. And in that day, they're going to have no excuse when all hell breaks loose and calamities come, the plagues are in full swing. When those troops walk down the street and start gunning you, Jace, down, you're going to have no excuse in that day. Don't call out to the Most High, man. Don't you dare say it, try to say his name. Don't even, don't even uh, uh, make it go past your breath. Because in that day, don't even try to call out to the Lord because he's not going to hear your ass. And we're, and, and you know, the Lord is fed up with it, man. You know, and we're not angry enough. We're not angry enough at what we're seeing. But make no mistake, Yahweh Bashim El Shai is angry with the wicked every single day. And that's why he's going to be justified in what he is about to do on the planet Earth. And there is nothing that anyone can say otherwise. There's no, you know, what ifs or buts. No, this place has continually spewed out wickedness and rebellious acts and, 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 and practices that is against our Lord Yahweh Bashem El Shai. That is against life itself. That's against uh, the ethical morals which is given to us by Yahweh Bashem El Shai. The morals that are that, that make sense. And that's why, it's like the scriptures say, they're going to eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. So I'm going to hop into the precepts I have here. I'm going to try not to make this too long. All right. So uh, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22. And I'm going to go down just a little bit. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 17 It says in the word of the Lord Yahweh Bashim El Shai came unto me saying Son of man 
the house of Israel is to me become dross. Okay, and what's that dross? And we um, spoke about it in the previous video. That dross is that it's the impurities, it's the filth, it's the gunk, and the, and the filthiness that's splattered all over our people. It's like it's like a pig's wallowing in the mire, and the, and the scriptures tell you that it says as the uh, uh, as the swine that the, uh, go back to the wallowing of his own mire. Because when you wash when you wash swine, what's that swine gonna do? He's gonna go right back to the filth and revel in it. And that's what our people are compared to right now. Two thirds of our people, because the Lord's not even regarding two thirds of our people as His right now. And you can and you and you notice because the spirit is hot right now. It is heated against two thirds of our people in the rest of this world. So Rena says, all they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even the dross of silver. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, because ye are all become dross. Behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So will I gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. So the Lord, since he sees our people as dross or two thirds of our people as dross and as tin and all these, uh, uh, un, uh, you know, these unsavory materials, He's going to gather our people together. All right. And we, they already been gathered here in Babylon the Great. And guess what? The Lord is going to melt them in the furnace, in the, in the fury. So going on down. Um, okay. Verse 24. It says, son of man, say unto her, thou art the land that is not cleansed. See? And that's why the scriptures mention them as being dross. Again, that's the filth, that's the uh, impurities that's on them. And that is uh, gained, or that's obtained, should I say, from take, putting their hands to the affairs of the world, the affairs of Babylon the Great, which is America. It says, uh, read none, it says, nor rain up upon it in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of our prophets in the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion raving in the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. All right. And um, let me see if I can go down just a little bit. Yeah, here it is. Yep. Uh, continue reading. Verse 26 says, Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane, right? They don't put any difference between the holy and the profane. They don't put anything. Uh, they don't put any difference between what's righteous and what's what's wicked. All right. And that's especially. Uh, our people that are that are uh, in, in behind the podium. With the elaborate suits. And the uh, and the sweet words that they give towards our people in a song and dance and get and get the bag at the end, end of at the end of Sunday. Uh, it says, uh, yeah, they have put no difference between the unclean and the clean because they're not able to even do that in the first place because they themselves are unclean and they don't and they don't acknowledge that. They can't acknowledge that because the Lord, as much as like it says in Jeremiah, I believe it's the fifth chapter, the 15th chapter, it says that even though Moses and Samuel stood before the Lord, his mind cannot be towards his people. So it says again, it says they have shown no difference between uh, they they show difference. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. And I am profaned among them. Again, this evening, this evening is, is the start of the Sabbath over to the next evening. You already know Jake is going to be acting a, a, a complete fool. On the Sabbath. So they have hid, the, hid their eyes from his Sabbath and profane and, and the Lord is profane among them, man. And that's why the Lord, when when it comes to something that's profane, when you go into profane, it goes back to the word profanus, which means outside the temple. 
Anything that's profane is outside of the temple of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem El Shai. That's why he is casting off the majority of our people today. Because they're profane. You don't bring any profane thing into the temple. And that includes them. Uh, verse 27. It says, Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. And that's what it is at the end of the day. It's dishonest gain. And they see and they set gain as godliness. And they're saying that if you're not gaining, then you're not, you don't have godliness, that you're not, you know, close to you uh, to the uh, the most high. Or God, as they say. Uh, yeah, so that's it on that. That's all I want to grab. So let me go ahead and grab this next precept. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 23. It says, uh, yep, verse 22. It's like you. John, chapter 4, verse 22. It says, he worship you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. All right? And who are the Jews? The Israelites. Ultimately. Okay, from Judah all the way down to Issachar, because us, uh, us, we we are all becoming <clears throat> uh, one once again through the word of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Those two branches, uh, those two sticks that are being put together, pursuant to Ezekiel the thirty-seven chapter, those two sticks are being put together, which is the northern tribe, and the northern kingdom, and the southern kingdom. All right, and they're becoming one. So again, it says. Uh, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews and no other nation, by the way. Uh, verse 23 says, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. All right. And we have the truth. And we say that with confidence. We have 100 percent of the truth. Because somebody has to have it. So the Lord is looking for such to worship him. All right, like it says here, it says, for the father seeketh such to worship him. Now, the question is, are these, are these, are our people, are they worshiping the Lord tomorrow? Is the most high going to be anywhere in their breath tomorrow when they begin the feast, when they begin to indulge themselves underneath the umbrella of folly and wickedness? No. The Lord Yahweh Bashem is going to be far from them. So don't be surprised when the Lord start working tomorrow. And when I say working, I mean start bringing down a heavy judgment. Don't be surprised when you see shootings go down and, and, and mass, you know, mass shootings and, 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 and deaths being thrown around in this current world, in this society. You're going to see multiple news outlets saying, uh, speaking about deaths of people that have died on that day. So, uh, I think that's it on that. Yep. Go ahead and move on to the next precept. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there's a reason why the Lord, Yahweh Bashem El Shai, has specifically placed these different days on the Sabbath. And here it is. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. It says, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men, that sign that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of. So, so this particular mark is a mark of exemption. When you go into that word mark, uh, it, it means thorah, or uh, th yeah, thorah, which means a mark of exemption. And this mark is given unto the true worshipers, like I read earlier. They are given to the the ones that sign cry for 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 things that are taking place on the planet Earth, and that includes to tomorrow and other days like this. And on top of that other other um, activities and other works of wickedness that goes on on the planet of today due to the influence of America. So that mark, that mark of exemption is putting on the men of the Lord, the elect of the nation of Israel, which Lord's will, we're a part of that number. Because we don't take, we don't take any sort of uh, uh, surprise, so to speak, in days like that or, or revel. In days such as this Because we understand That these things that are set up Were set up to destroy our people And, and, and to and to uh, further the affliction And that's why life itself is at danger Because of this uh, Verse 5 it says And to the others And this is the point And to the others He said in my hearing 
Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. So to the others that don't have this exemption, all right, because guess what? They're going to be marked with something else. And you can read about it in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, the MOTB. And that's going to be the ultimate mark that they're going to receive rather than the mark of exemption. And this and, and doing this, what they're doing today is going to lead right into that. It's going to lead into them uh, um, receiving a physical mark. And that's why it says here into the others, the others that don't have this specific mark, but has the other mark, the MOTB. To the others, he said, in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. So that's why I was saying earlier, there's not going to be any pity for the majority of our people, two thirds of our people. It's going to be no uh, pity is going to be shown in that day and no mercy. All right. The only mercy is going to be shown is going to be shown towards the elect of the nation of Israel. The, re the, 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 the rest of you, you're done. You're finished. You're defeated. It's over. Finito. <laughs> okay. So read on, it says, slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house, so neither old or young, maids and little children and women. So the Lord is, has, has no respect to persons in this judgment. The ones that are not a part of this, 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 uh, this fold, and when I say that, I'm talking about the ones that worship Yahweh Bashem El Shai that believe, the ones that are that are not a part of that. All right, whether you're old, you're young, you're at the top, you're at the bottom, whether you're a, a child, whether you're a maid, whether you're a woman or a man, you're gonna get judged, and the Lord will judge you heavily because this is a heavy offense. There's no coming back from from that, man. So going to the next precept. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 32. It says, can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? And, and what's, what's taking place today is the preparation of the marriage. And which Israel is about to be married back to the heavenly father through his son, Yahweh Shai. And the majority of our people have no clue how to prepare themselves. They don't know what attire to put on. They don't know uh, what ornaments to put on. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to do themselves up for the wedding. And guess what? The husband, man, he's not going to be pleased with that. And he's, and he's not being pleased with that to this very day. So, in that regards, the maid and the bride that have forgot her attire and ornaments, that's two thirds of our people because it explains further. It says, yet my people have forgotten me days without number. So they forgot about Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And guess what? The Lord forgot them. Uh, pursuant to Hosea uh, chapter four. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. All right. Because they have forgotten the knowledge. The Lord has forgotten them. Uh, verse 33 says, why trimmest thou thy way? To seek love. And that's what our people ultimately do. That's why they're saying, look, man, it's for the kids. You know, for a holiday, you know, these other holidays. It says for the kids. You know, it's for, uh, and really it's not, man. It's for them. You know, they're just using the kids as, 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 a, as a buffer to do what they want to do. Because when you see the continents and how they go about, you know, certain days like this, they are all into it. So you say it's for the kids, right? Well, it looks like to me that you are the, you are the kid. You are the kid that that's for. And that's why our people are not able to digest this word because they're kids, they're children. Children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Again, it says, why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. Okay, see that? So, um, uh, Go ahead and move on to the next precept. <clears throat> this is book Amos. Actually, it's like it. Let me uh, 
grab this one first. This is the book of uh, Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 12. It says, And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lease, that say in their heart, The Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, El will not do good, neither will he do evil. So at that time, or at this time, right now, the Lord is searching Jerusalem with candles. He is, he is searching Jerusalem right now with, with lights, and we are the lights that are being sent out to search Jerusalem. And these people that, that are, 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 are settled in this land, they're being, they're, they're about to be punished. And they, like I said, it's going to be a heavy punishment. It's going to be a heavy judgment. Reading on, it says uh, that, that say in their heart or their minds, the Lord, Yahweh Bashem El will not do good, neither will he do evil. See that? So they're like, oh, well, you know, words, words say that in the Bible, you know, or, or, or uh, you know, well, you know, laws done away with, you know, and making excuses like that, man. And we get tired of hearing that, you know, because it's, it's too late in the game to be to be in that kind of mindset. And that's why we don't even. Uh, we don't we don't even uh, bug out or so to speak or lose our minds over this because we already know that the Lord has blinded the majority of our people Say, and he's saving them for destruction. Like I said, the Lord is putting these days on, on the Sabbath for a reason. And then I'm reading about it right now. So moving on from there, grab this last one. Amos chapter five, verse 21. It says, I hate, I despise your feast days. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. This is a feast day that they're having. The Lord's not going to smell any of that because that's a sacrifice. They're sending up savers up into the air that the Lord is not pleased with. That's why he said he despised the feast day and he will not smell any in their solemn assemblies. And this is a solemn assembly to them. They take this seriously. It's not a year that has gone by that they have ever missed a Thanksgiving, a Christmas, a Halloween, a 4th of July. There has not been a year that has not passed by that they have missed any of these days. That's why they take this seriously. And then concerning our people, they go above and beyond the deeds of the wicked to uh, to fulfill these uh, these things and to um, set up, you know, uh, certain decorations or what have you. Just for, for just, just for these particular days. But when you tell them to put down the pork, when you tell them the, the, the men of our people not to shave their beards, when you tell them to, uh, to, to honor the Sabbath, when you tell them not to commit adultery, when you tell them any of these things, it's a problem. But you'll go above and beyond for these different days, right? You'll go, you'll go all out for Christmas and Thanksgiving and all these other days. But you will not go all out for your how about Shemel Shai. So the Lord got something for you. Verse 22 said, Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. See that? So the Lord's not accepting any of this. Now verse 23 says, Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. And that's what's uh, ultimately is going to happen. It's like like a continual stream that doesn't stop. So that's how judgment is going to be. It's going to run down its waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. That means it's going to run continually and it's not going to stop. And there's nothing that can stop that that mighty stream that's that's going to sweep our people away. So I'm going to go ahead and end off on that note. The Lord's will is edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. To next time, once again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone of real well to this day. And also, Charlotte Wong, peace and safety. Citations to the hopeful elect, continuing to labor in his work. And labor to show for your diligence to make your calling and election sure. In faith, in truth and sincerity, and all charity. And with that, I'm going to say Charlotte